It's time now for our first interview on episode 19 of the Off the Ball League of Ireland podcast. It's Jamie Moore here, and we're joined now on Skype by new Sligo Rover striker Mikey Drennan. Mikey, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm good, Jeff. Thanks. Mikey, thanks so much for uh, having a chat with us. Now, uh, last week, Sligo announced that uh, you had uh, signed for the club. I think it was last Wednesday. Talk me through your journey to becoming a Sligo Rovers player over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I suppose probably started a few weeks ago when uh, Jura kind of gave me, a, gave me a ring and asked would I go up and, uh, and play a game uh, with them on, on a Tuesday. And I said, yeah, and went up there and we played the Irish Guard before they went away to the Euros and... I um, played we won three one, so I scored two, and I think that was kind of a the main because I wasn't going, we weren't going to say it was just kind of go up there and see how I kind of fit in and all that stuff. But I think once that kind of happened, I said, yeah, that's it's kind of a no brainer, especially with the site like the size of the club. They're a massive club, and the fan base is massive as well, and 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 the manager there as well, Jared. That was a, a big reason why. Mike, you've signed a professional contract. How does it feel to be a professional footballer again after taking a couple of years away for personal reasons? Feels very good, and um, especially to be back doing what doing what I love. And because I did l- lose that love for the game, I, kind of for a few years, and I'm just delighted to be back now. More, I feel like I'm more mature. I know how to deal with things better, and, and I think that's a that's a major part of why I wanted to be back. I wanted to be that hundred percent. I didn't want to be ninety percent or eighty five or or anything like that. I wanted to be 100% committed to the club and for the players. It wouldn't be fair on, on the manager or, or the club or fans or players or anything like that if it was 90%. I want to be 100% to make sure I can contribute to, to say, go, go, go there. I want to go there and I want to win trophies. I want to win and I want to score goals. That's that's my ambition. I'm an ambitious player so that's, that's hoping that's going to happen for this year and then maybe next year then again. Yeah, Mikey, just in terms of your background, for those who aren't fully aware, you, you signed for Aston Villa as a teenager. You spent a number of years there, uh, played in the Next Gen Series, which is a, an international, uh, effectively the Champions League for under-23 players. You had loan spells at Carlisle and Portsmouth. And then in 2015, you came home, you signed for Shamrock Rovers. You were top scorer in that season with 12 goals. You had a taste of League of Ireland football again. And then in May of 2016, after a game between Shamrock Rovers and Bowes, you decided that you needed to step away from the game. Just give us the background into that night. It was at Daly Park. Shamrock Rovers, I think, had won the match. You'd been involved in the game and you went outside the dressing room and, and had to have a cry. Yeah, it was it was a strange. Like, we beat Bowes. Probably it's one of the biggest games of the year. Like, you were playing against your rivals and we won 4-0 like, and we were fairly impressive. And um, I remember just walking. I just wasn't happy playing the game. It just didn't feel right. Um, played the whole game and I don't know, I just went that way didn't feel right. You feel felt in the dressing room like I was just going to kind of cry and I literally had to walk outside and um, the manager that was at, that's there now Stephen Bradley he actually came out and, and spoke to me and it was just I just wasn't happy like it w- wouldn't have been fair I could have stayed there and I could have picked up my up my wages and I could have just kind of lapsed around and did nothing but I think I, like the club or Shamrock Rovers were very good to me at the, at the time and gave me the time I needed to think things through and at the end of the day, I did it for, for myself and I think I've benefited from it and I've become a stronger person. And um, I'm just looking forward to getting back started again and, and, and hopefully just get start scoring goals. Yeah, I think shortly after that time, Mikey, you gave an interview to uh, one of the websites and you said that people were asking you, how are you depressed? You're a footballer, you only live life at the top. And I don't want to focus too much about that time because I want to speak to you about now and what you've been doing, playing for Evergreen and also playing some hurling as well. But there is that assessment by people outside the bubble that football is great and no matter what happens, if you're in England and you're homesick or you're in your apartment or you're not playing and you come home and you're trying to deal with life in England in comparison to life to here, that you should just be able to put your, your, your head down and get on with it. But that's not always the case. No, it's not. No, that's, that's I think, that the bubble that everyone just thinks, oh, you're over in England, you're, like, you're only over there 16 cents, but people think you're on 10 grand a week and they, they think unrealistic things and like, how can you, how can you not be happy like you have so much money and, and all that stuff and, as you can see by by people that have money and people that have like men, mental um, illness and all that, so it doesn't matter how much money you have. Yeah, I'd rather have hundred euro a week than than have ten thousand. If I'm not if I'm not going to be happy, if I'm happy with hundred euro in a home and all that stuff, then that, that's the way it is. Like, and I, I I just think that the way people come out, obviously people that know football and, and know the they know the difficulties of it. Obviously, if you're not playing or if you're stuck in your apartment or you're you're doing whatever you're gambling or you're er, everything like that. I just don't think people know the real reasons that, like kind of inside the football kind of world. Yeah, and you spoke about having to put on a fake smile, Mikey. Tell me about that. 
yeah, it's, I suppose it's just trying to make, not telling anyone, not letting anyone know that there is wrong, because you need to have that strong mentality when you're in football, not let anyone know that you're hurt or you're, or you're weak. And it's, I suppose it's the same in any kind of job, no matter what kind of job you're in. A lot of people will have a kind of fake smile, and then if someone does come out with it, you're kind of, you, you're, you're taken back by you, but I think you just get good at hiding it. Yeah, and at that time when you're in the UK, can you put your finger on on when you first thought that something mentally wasn't right? Was it a time when you weren't playing, when you were homesick, when you were lonely? Can you put your finger on, you know, when you realised I actually need need to get some help here, or, or need to speak to someone and need to need to try and get myself right again? Um, well, I suppose it probably started probably when I was a first year. Because I remember I was staying with I was staying me and Brian Burke were in the same house and we were staying together, and I remember just after training, getting into my doctors and going into bed and closing across the curtain and just watching telly. And I remember Graham used to come in and say, come on, go out and do something. I'd say, no, I don't want that, and, or I don't want to go do it, and, or I want to go and shop. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother. Like, it, that, that stage, but sometimes I would, sometimes, but most of the time I wouldn't. And I remember that, and then I, I, that was kind of a regular occurrence, was kind of going into my bedroom and closing the curtain and just watching telly and kind of not really caring, like not going out for a coffee and all that stuff when, when they should have. But I think it was really when I kind of came home to Shamrock Rovers, that's when that's when I started getting the help. Yeah, I'll ask you about uh, Graham Burke in a minute. Just a final one on the time in the UK, Mikey. You got some online abuse on Twitter. Certain fans were calling you fat. You're a professional footballer. You're a professional athlete. You're clearly not fat. But those tweets made you think to yourself and ask yourself, am I actually fat? Which is bizarre and strange, but that just shows, I suppose, what online trolls can do to people at times. Yeah, that's something some people are kind of strong. Like, you'd look at it and you kind of say, yeah, I was a bit overweight, like, but people are, like, kind of fat. Like, it's, it shouldn't really get to you. But, like, inside it does. Some people are kind of laugh it off and they'd have banter with them or something like that. But a lot of other people would kind of take it, kind of take take back by it. And, like, Jesus, kind of, you, you do start to doubt yourself. But I think now that's where, if something like that was happening, I'd laugh it off. And more mature, I'd know how to deal with it. And, I think that's that's where you just need you need to look after yourself and and like fans are fans are always going to say stuff about you if it's positive or negative, no matter what it is, they'll always have something to say. Mikey, at that time, just talk me finally through the help that is available or isn't available to you as a young footballer in England until you've come home via the PFA and the PFAI. What help was there for you then and now? And do you feel there's enough for, for young people who are going through, whether that be depression or addiction or they're having a bet or, or you know, any, anything like that? Yeah, well, there is like there is help there, but I don't think enough people actually use it. Like there should be, I think, for players, I think if they go talk to people or if, there's, if it's someone that they trust, a coach or a, a manager. So I, I think it would be, it probably would be better if there was more probably help there. I think, from from that aspect, um, I just I I just think that it's taking people to come out with for for to kind of be more of an issue. Okay, and so you come home, you sign for Shamrock Rovers, you decide in May 2016 that you're going to give football a break. What did you do in that period? I know you got a job working in retail, you played some hurling for your local club, James Stevens GAA, and you also played for Evergreen FC, you came back and you played in an FAI Junior Cup final at the Aviva as well, so you certainly spent the time well to, to be able to, to recover mentally, but also you kept yourself taking over in a, a sporting sense as well. Yeah, exactly. It was, it, to be fair, it was probably a good year. We played in the FAI um, Cup final where where we got where we got bet, and then um, I played in the county final then as well with my club James Stevens, and we lost in the final then as well. But um, it was it was good just to kind of be back with your friends and just kind of re- relax more and, and enjoy it again. Yeah, and at that time then, you know, when you're in the middle of all of that, when did you think that the League of Ireland was a good option for you again, and how soon did you decide that you wanted to to come back? I, I know you said your phone was ringing, but you know, I, I think you had offers maybe this time last year and you decided that for, for whatever reason you weren't ready then, but now you are now. Yeah, I think the the, the two years that I have been out, I think I've realised that I do want to give it another go because I do think I have, I'm a stronger person for it and that'll help because mentally I probably wasn't strong enough. And now, but now I think I, I'm definitely strong enough and, and I'm really looking forward to getting back.